Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and this is module number 7 where uh, I am discussing uh, the introduction to battery pack design and this is lecture number 32 where uh, I will be talking uh, talking on uh, degradation uh, and safety issues of uh, lithium and rechargeable cells. Now, um, first uh, I will talk uh, in fact, this is uh, some kind of uh, recapitulation you already know about it, uh, but uh, this is important to know the degradation phenomena of each individual cell, because now um, what we I am trying to do is to connect it in series and parallel to make a battery module and uh, the degradation is important because uh, if the cells are uh, degraded during its operation their cause uh, is uh, not known um, then you cannot take the um, precautionary step uh, so that uh, uh, you cannot take the precautionary step to build a bigger uh, and quality battery so, the operational safety is also important, so we will also talk about it and uh, how to transport and store this individual cell or battery modules that will also be introduced. So, <coughs> degradation basically is the loss of lithium somehow in the cell on repeated charge and discharge cycling. So, this is uh, considered the cyclability and also the capacity can be lost with progressive increase in charge and discharge current. So, that is very relevant for electric vehicle use, it is not a continuous discharge, sometimes it is a continuous discharge, sometimes uh, you are discharging at a very low rate, sometimes you are discharging at a very high rate. So, there is a change in the rate current and the capacity is also affected with the change in the rate current. So, this too uh, basically degrades the cell performance. Now, there are three prominent uh, phenomena which is responsible for this. The first one is lithium is lost somewhere during repeated cycling. So, alteration of the composition or reformation of the um, ACI layer and by deposition of metal lithium, these three are the root cause. Alteration of the composite means that uh, in the virgin state, the positive electrode uh, is having a particular structure, then you are extracting the lithium during charging and then during discharge, this lithium is again going back to the host lattice. But when they are going back to the host lattice, it is not same like the virgin lattice where from they came. So, there is a structural transition is taking place, layer structure can be transformed into a spinel structure or there could be this P 2 to O 3 to P 1 this kind of uh, transition uh, which is relevant for the oxygen packing that is taking place. So, that environment is completely changed and uh, you cannot expect that the lithium uh, will exactly go back uh, and sit in the respective position the way it were in the virgin state and that will uh, certainly lead to poor coulombic efficiency. Second one is ACI layer formation. So, some part of the lithium is lost uh, in the uh, negative electrode part because of the formation of the ACI and in most of the instances this uh, ACI is basically pervious to the lithium ion movement because that is a uh, decomposition product of the electrolyte. So, lithium can pass through, but when the ACI is thicker because of their poor mechanical integrity with the anode material, then what will happen you will find that. Uh, the <coughs> lithium is lost. And finally, um, at low temperature as well as uh, uh, when the rate of uh, charge is too high, uh, electroplating of lithium on the anode surface can also be possible. 
followed by dendritic formation and loss of this lithium into the electrolyte because of the disintegration of this kind of uh, uh, your <coughs> um, lithium uh, deposition. So, all those uh, create the loss of lithium. So, this basically decrease the concentration of lithium uh, salt and self discharge of the charge state is due to the reaction between the electrolyte and the lithium present in the graphite. So, that is also one cause where in the charge state when all the lithium is present in the graphite it start to react um, with the electrolyte and this reactivity causes a decrease in the composition uh, of the ACI and it becomes more resistive for the effective charge transfer. So, the charge transfer resistance from the Nyquist plot you will see that it is uh, enhanced increased. Second one is the degradation of the active material in the electrode. Uh, this uh, I have separately illustrated in earlier lectures, I have already talked about it. Exfoliation of the intercalated structure of the graphite, so that breaks the layer of the graphite. Then fracturing of particle by volumetric expansion or by gas emission. Uh, this is uh, pertinent to uh, metal alloy and also lithium cobalt oxide, this uh, gas emission and also the lithium manganese rich uh, positive electrode material, the oxygen evolution takes place during charging beyond 4.5 volt. Then disordering of the crystal arrangement, so layered phase transition that also I talked about. So, that all these things uh, degrade the active materials in the electrode. And finally, the dissolution of metal cation under certain circumstances manganese 2 plus if it is present it dissolves in the electrolyte due to a disproportionate reaction uh, manganese 4 plus and manganese 3 plus. So, there is a disproportionate reaction uh, and it basically uh, if manganese 3 plus is uh, affluent it causes manganese 4 plus and manganese 2 plus ions and manganese 2 plus uh, dissolute inside the electrolyte. So, that degrades the uh, active material in the respective electrode. Apart from that there is a parasitic reaction. So, that degradation uh, of the polymer binder is possible. So, that will disintegrate the whole composite electrode material. Local corrosion is possible with the collectors, uh, particularly if trace amount of water is there. So, HF will be generated and this hydrofluoric acid will corrode the current collector. And contamination of the active sites that is possible where lithium go and set. So, these are the root causes of the degradation and what exactly is affected due to this. So, this phenomena lead to the change in the surface property of the electrode and also the current collectors. Internal resistance of the cell is increased. So, that will uh, lead to the problem of cell balancing which I was mentioning in the last lecture. The increase in polarization because of increase of over voltage and ohmic resistance of the element deteriorate the capacity. Then full charge or full char uh, discharge is not achievable because of this degradation phenomena. The performance at high rate is especially affected. So, all this factor, this degradation and the factors that is being affected due to those cell degradation that basically uh, is uh, of major concern because of the cell balancing uh, will become uh, progressively more and more challenging. That is why it is very important to get the cell of um, uh, equal kind of or uh, the homogeneous kind of uh, electrochemical performance rather than some cells they are performing well, some cells are really bad, some cells are moderate and then cell balancing will be really, really problematic. 
So, the damage of the crystalline structure one example I have shown it here and this is very important for this type of um, uh, LMR kind of cathode um, <coughs> lithium and manganese rich cathode material which I introduced earlier. You know that during charging um, from uh, this phase L i 2 M n O 3 uh, this phase uh, oxygen comes out and uh, uh, basically it forms a, a L i uh, after uh, once you take out this L i 2 O lithium and oxygen, oxygen is coming out along with the lithium and it forms a uh, structure like this and when all the lithium is you are taking out you get a MnO2 structure. So, when you discharge it then this MnO2 it is uh, free to take lithium. So, basically it forms uh, lithium manganese oxide uh, phase. So, now this lithium manganese phase uh, upon repeated cycling what will happen that uh, this manganese oxide will take lithium and remaining part is still L i 2 M n O 3. So, you can see that L i 2 M n O 3 was there, it is still there, but part of it it was transformed to manganese dioxide and then upon lithiation during the next discharge cycle it forms this uh, L i x M n O 2 type of phase. So, there are three different types of phase right sorry two different types of phase one is this unreacted or yet to be reacted uh, lithium manganese oxide and um, this is from the created manganese oxide upon intercalation of lithium you get this this phase LiMnO2 type of phase electrochemically prepared. Now, once you uh, start to cycle it you will find that this structure will be structurally transformed into a spinel phase something like uh, a b 2 o 4 kind of l i m n 2 o 4 kind of phase. And this layer to spinel phase transition in this LMR cathode that is detrimental for their cyclability. So, cyclic characteristics will be deteriorated. Now, this can be identified by uh, the X-ray diffraction study. So, you can see that uh, uh, the spinel phase is uh, there along with the layered phase at certain level of cycling of this particular cathode. And from this peak area you can calculate what is the actual volume content of spinel and the layered material. And you can find that when you are charge and discharge at relatively low rate here in this case 15 milli ampere per gram, then if this layer to spinel transformation is very high 1 is to 8.1. So, once you are cycling it at relatively low rate then this spinel to sorry layer to spinel phase transition is expedite. Progressively once you increase this current here it is 15 then you increase it to 50 then you have increased it to further um, higher uh, rate it is 100 milli ampere per gram. Then progressively this layered phase transition layer to spinel phase transition is progressively reduced you see at higher rate this transformation is grossly retarded. So, it is a boon instead of reducing the capacity we will find the capacity is in fact increase when you cycle it at higher rate. So, this kind of structural change uh, that happens um, while you uh, charge and discharge at different rate for various chemistry we have discussed for lithium as well as sodium and battery that is very important because you will have to do lot of study just to understand that at which state uh, what is happening. And you will have to gain insight uh, from the materials point of view from its structural and microstructural point of view that what is the root cause of this kind of um, uh, variation. So, it is exactly opposite way uh, that usually we find 
we find that if you increase the rate, if you uh, drain uh, lithium too fast or try to intercalate lithium too fast, then capacity actually reduces. But in this type of cathode, uh, you will find the reverse when, when, when you the rate performance when you increase the rate, then in fact, its capacity uh, deterioration uh, is less. Uh, so, that is uh, one part uh, is quite interesting. So, uh, we try to uh, uh, show you that uh, this is the phenomena that already I talked about. So, this is the active material and once you charge uh, more than 4.5 volt, then basically uh, all the capacity is uh, due to nickel as well as cobalt this uh, uh, type of oxidation. Uh, then uh, along with that uh, this inert part uh, lithium manganese oxide which is inactive. So, that uh, uh, yield this layer to spinel transformation and this layer to spinel transformation basically one can return. Um, uh, if you uh, have the rating this uh, cy cycling rate at higher current. So, it is a very complicated phenomena uh, where you can understand that uh, you can change the content of this uh, uh, Li 2 MnO 3. In the last slide if you remember that here we have used a very high percentage of this inactive phase and the active phase was only 10 percent. So, I have the flexibility to change this to increase it and reduce it. So, this part uh, is important that inactive part is almost 90 percent. So, in the next view slide I have shown that increase of the nominal Li 2 MnO 3 content you see here the MnO 3 content is pretty less then the spinel transformation is also relatively less. But once you increase this content progressively higher, then you will find this spinel transformation is also high. Now, once the spinel transformation is high in this, those type of cathode, if you increase the rate, it is found that the degradation is very, very marginal. So, that is one uh, thing that I wanted to point it out that there are a lot of material science issue in designing a good cathode material. Uh, and in fact, a good quality of uh, cell uh, and this kind of concept is very important the understanding that why it is happening that is very, uh, very, very important for you to prepare good quality cell and as you can understand uh, by now after listening all this lecture that everything depends on material science, the quality of the cell remaining part are all manageable, how to connect it in series and parallel, then design a BMS, then design its thermal management issue, pack it properly to have a built, but the basic uh, cell performance will be decided by the materials, by the positive material, by the electrolyte, by the negative material, by the current collector <coughs> along with the cell fabrication, how, how quality cells you can make. So, the material issue is very, very important. So, this is highlighted in this. So, if you see that uh, progressively you are increasing the rate. So, once you have a low rate um, like this, there is a fall in capacity and for initial few cycles always the capacity increases and that is related to the fact that not at one go all Li 2 MnO 3 is transformed to activated manganese oxide that takes part in taking the lithium and integrate into the LMR based cathode. So, it takes time. So, therefore, um, it is progressively uh, the reaction takes place. The very first slides what I showed you, you see that this is going like this and after repeated cycling all this part of Li 2 MnO 3 that will transform into activated manganese oxide which will eventually react with uh, lithium to form uh, a layer structure material which are structurally integrated to this type of cathode. So, uh, for this one that is why 
instead of the capacity being reduced with the cycle, the capacity increases with the cycle. And as you can see, once you cross this limit of 20 milliampere per gram using uh, the rate current, you see that there is no, no change of this kind of fall because of the layer to spinel transition. So, layer to spinel transition is grossly retarded when you do not give it enough chance because you are using a very high rate current. So, that is the fundamentals of the structural degradation for LMR type of cathode material. Formation and reformation of ACI already I have talked about. So, this is just a recapitulation that sometime uh, you have this uh, exfoliation or cracking can take place. ACI growth can take place, then ACI dissolution can take place and then if uh, a, a, a lower surface, I mean the active surface is uh, uh, available, then lithium dendrite can form. Uh, that also depends on temperature as well as the rate of uh, the charge that will expedite this dendrite. So, all that this phenomena, they eventually degrade the material. for alloy based material, it is the expansion and ACI growth, then the disintegration of ACI growth, even disintegration of these particles, then delamination uh, of the active particles from the current collector, forming a thicker ACI which is impervious to alkali ions, they all basically degrade the cell. Corrosion of the collector that is another point and particularly trace level of H 2 O uh, that reacts with the L i P F 6 which is a fluoride based salt and H F is generated and H F is uh, extremely corrosive and that can damage the current collectors. And corrosion of the collectors also take place when the cell potential window surpass the window of um, electrolyte potential. You remember that HOMO and LUMO gap. So, your uh, uh, negative electrode will uh, uh, get affected. So, it will get reduced um, uh, and electrolyte will get decomposed and uh, precipitate on the surface to form a CI layer. So, all these factors are important uh, to be considered when you design a cell particularly from material perspective. Lithium plating uh, is one of uh, other problems and that is possible for graphite on lower potential and this reaction is not reversible. Um, Li 2 O also can form which is insulating in nature. So, low temperature or high charge current um, and capacity deterioration of the negative electrode, this becomes uh, less when uh, than the capacity of the positive electrode which is more detrimental. Already you have lower capacity of positive material as compared to your negative material. If somehow you start losing the negative material capacity, the full cell capacity will be severely affected. Migration of species is another factor, overcharging or deep discharge of lithium ion cell form electrolyte soluble species and this species migrates between the electrodes during charge discharge operation and eventually they may get reduced to form surface layer and already we have described it. Gas formation is another problem which degrades the cell. So, this is due to dissolution and reformation of ACI one of them then corrosion of the current collectors that also can produce gas. Migration of reaction product that is another factor or charging the LMR positive uh, cathode this lithium manganese rich positive cathode they can evolve lattice oxygen uh, from this Li 2 MnO 3 kind of component and uh, this gas. Uh, form can increase a mechanical stress. In case of the negative electrode, it can accelerate the reaction relating to the reformation of ACI and gas is trapped in the pores of the active material and that can reduce the specific active surface area of the electrode. 
So, it is detrimental and in case of pouch cell you know after forming cycle therefore, we will have to uh, give a time 3 4 cycles we will have to give. So, that the all the gas evolves and then you puncture it and then finally, sell it. So, process complexity that uh, is enhanced increased because of this gas uh, evaluation. Operation safety is uh, important you remember that lithium cobalt oxide is used under positive electrode extensive extraction if you do uh, of lithium there is a substantial octahedral lamellar structure. Um, I mean uh, there is a change of this octahedral lamellar structure and oxygen is released and this oxygen eventually uh, oxidizes the organic solvent and which evaporates causing the in increase of the internal pressure because of the gas formation and sometimes it can lead to explosion because the reaction is exothermic and uh, if the electrolyte is having lower flash point then this problem uh, exaggerated. Uh, lithium can be deposited on the graphite surface that can cause internal short circuit, uh, particularly at higher charge rate it is expedited. Considering this uh, your polyanion based material they are very stable that is why I like polyanion material be that N 3 V 2 P O 4 kind of thing Nasigon structure or L I P O F E 4 they are very stable as compared to the layered oxide type of positive electrode. And even all the lithium you take it out your F E P O 4 is completely stable and uh, they do not cause any kind of uh, oxygen evaluation and excessive discharge if you do that also do not cause any exothermic reaction uh, which eventually uh, leads to a thermal runaway situation. Increasing the operating temperature with strong current uh, that leads to the thermal runaway and that cause the SEI to get decomposed uh, if particularly carbon based electrode is used and gas formation leads to increase in internal pressure. Stability consideration of electrodes and electrolyte must be considered and abuse of the cell that I will talk separately in as a part of another lecture. So, I have tabulated all this operational safety uh, when you are selecting a particular chemistry of a cell for a particular application or you are making the cell in designing the cell choosing the right kind of positive material and electrolyte and negative uh, material for your purpose. Uh, you should know all this material related aspect in order to form a quality cell and that is why uh, separately again I am recapitulating all the important aspect as far as the cell degradation is concerned. So, if you all together uh, you um, uh, put it then these are the causes external short circuit, high temperature, overcharge, over discharge, high charge C rate I mean whatever has been specified beyond that piercing of the battery you should not abuse the battery internal short circuit will take place crushing it. So, handling is also important once you use the lithium ion battery you cannot throw it uh, anywhere you like. So, that is extremely dangerous proper recycling is uh, important another module is devoted for this purpose. So, this is the reasons and lithium plating that can lead to this internal short circuit and occurrence of internal energetic events uh, that is uh, taken place they are all exothermic electrode electrolyte interaction decomposition of the material all electrochemical reactions. Now, if the temperature rise that surpass the heat dissipation, if the thermal management is poor, if the heat whatever has been generated in a hot spot in a particular cell there is no way it can dissipate then what will happen thermal runaway will happen and that will cause flame, fumes, leakage, gas and this is destruction. So, thermal runaway is directly related uh, to some extent to this uh, lithium plating and internal short circuit it is exactly uh, when it, uh, this is uh, quite well connected 
and this is very well connected if you try to pierce the battery. So, all are interrelated phenomena and this you should always keep in mind. Transport and storage of lithium ion battery is important. Actually, no particular precaution needs to be taken when taking a battery if it is less than certain uh, energy, whatever 96, whatever that is typically the capacity of your laptop. But limitation will apply when the battery, spare battery uh, you are connecting uh, in your hand luggage and there is a chance for internal short circuit positive and negative, uh, they are connected, they are internally short circuited, uh, then they can uh, produce enormous exothermic uh, reactions and that can uh, cause fire. Uh, so, it is necessary to package them in such way so that no short circuit is taking place. If more than a certain quantity of battery is being transported, um, specific level needs to be displayed uh, in the packaging, so that people know that you should not abuse this, it contains lithium ion battery. In fact, uh, you from if you are importing the battery from outside, there are certain regulation uh, in this regard. Uh, the storage of uh, the lithium based primary as well as secondary cells um, um, is important with a view that recycling must be done, so that there are absolutely no danger of contact between the terminals of the elements. So, um, that I already mentioned you cannot throw the used lithium ion battery anywhere, uh, so that is extremely dangerous even a dead battery is also extremely dangerous. In case of fire, it is preferably to use carbon dioxide or arganite uh, extinguisher to get rid of the fire. So, uh, mm, this part of the lecture, uh, this book, uh, it, it already I have referred it and there is a nice uh, description uh, of this book and that is your study material. Apart from that, these two books are also uh, quite informative. So, I would like you to read this uh, two particular books. So, in this particular lecture, we talked about the degradation phenomena and various types of degradation phenomena and they are explained that what are the root cause of this degradation. Then operational safety is important, what are the causes and consequences of thermal runaway that is illustrated and finally, the precautionary measure for transport and storage of lithium ion batteries, they are discussed. Thank you for your attention.